Well, thank you for tuning in to the F5 Recovery Podcast. We are so grateful that you are here. Uh, this is one pretty Ricky. I'm my co-host, Adam Martin, Kirsten Uvenen, and Scott College. Uh, we are so thankful that we're able to continue to do this show, and but this show would not be possible without our amazing sponsors. So, of course, thank you to the F5 Project, the Ridge Treatment and Reentry Center, of course, Heat Transfer Warehouse, Shirts from Fargo, and our season sponsor, GoWayBear.com. So we are having a great show today. We're going to talk about friendships and recovery. I just decided that that's our topic today. Oh, with my friends. Because of all the laughter we just had. So yeah, why, <coughs> why were we laughing, Yeah, I know. <laughs> talk about before they get on their shirt. Yeah, well, I guess we uh, we were talking about bonding. Yeah, we yeah, were. You know, yes, we were. Right. It's bondage. Yeah. It's bonding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, well, we were talking about a, a game that a bond, no. not you guys be serious and okay. appropriate here. Mm-hmm. We are talking about the a re-entry simulation. Yes, do yes. Oh, explain that. That yeah. really was We cool. also talked about that. Well, Darby's currently working on Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Darby's working on uh, No, we went to South Dakota and we participated in this re-entry simulation by the uh, Department of Corrections. And so I went to, I, I was, my name was like Bob or something like that and I had and and I had spent 14 years in prison. I was released. I had no forms of ID. I had a couple bus tickets and like 50 bucks. And they were like, you have to get a job, you know, find a place to live, you know, all this stuff. And so like, there's like 14 stations around the room, and you have to use a bus ticket to like go to each place. And if you run out of tickets, you're like screwed. Yeah. And so by the end of the second week, because they they time it, so you got to, you know, like 15, 20 minutes to do your week one. So like, meet with your PO get a job, go to the halfway house, take your UAs, go to the job and take a UA, you know, all this stuff. And by the end of the second week, I was in jail. <laughs> I was like, because when we first started, I didn't know what we were doing. So when they first came, they were like, they put us all in this room and they're like, all right, we're going to do a re-entry simulation. And then they explained it. I looked around the room and I was like, not one of these people have ever been released from prison. <laughs> Bet, I got this. I'm going to win. <laughs> Nope. I was, by the, by mid set of the second week, I was like, my whole game plan, game plan pivoted. I was like, I'm just going to make as much money as I can before I go back to prison. Yeah, for real. And I did. I, when I went to jail, when they finally sent me to jail, I had a lot of money I could have put on my books. (laughs) I had more money than anybody else. So yeah. I knew how to make money, but I didn't know how to stay sober, apparently, and, yeah. I, and I didn't know where my probation office was. Good God. So, <laughs> At least you got a lot of honey buns. Yeah, yeah. So I sat pretty good in, in jail. for. But for that's realistic, though. Oh, yeah. What did they say of all the people that played the game, Scott? Was yes. uh, like 60% of them went to jail? Yes, yeah. 60. There was like 40 people oh. in that room or something like that? Holy yeah, yeah I, like I went to jail and it was just like me and this other dude, and we were like became buddies. I became, the, I became the, I became the pod yeah. boss. And, yeah. so I was like, and then, uh, and then they started coming in one by one, and so then when they came in, I was like, what up, what up, new fish? <laughs> <laughs> and so then they asked this probation officer who played the game or whatever, and he got sent to jail. And she was like, well, what happened? He's like, my PO's a bitch. <laughs> And it was a PO. <laughs> yeah. So it was it was fun, and I think that the people that were in that room, they you know most of them are the people who are working with the you know uh, you know folks that are in re- going through yeah. reentry. They were probation officers, correctional staff, administration, you know, executive yeah. staff. Exa- uh, <laughs> and and I think they got a better concept of like how how tedious the process can yeah, be. Yeah, for like, real. You know that checking the box is more important than mental health. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so it was. It was cool, and and so I came back and I was like, Darby, I have this great idea. We should do a reentry simulation. She's like, I had this idea like two years ago. The one I told you about two years ago. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I knew that. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't a great idea then. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never. I mean, you just, I think we could. Pres- it's true though. We could float that to the uh, Department of Corrections here. I think they'd love that. Yeah. It would be... Well, just that experience is we huge. Could, we could bring the real deal. <laughs> bring our own, some of our own people. 
Oh, yeah. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. I mean, it really is like, how difficult is it to, and that doesn't even take into consideration, if you've been sitting for 14 years, your ability to handle like, just how overwhelming it is to be in public, to be, you know, to have all this freedom, that's not even taken into consideration. It's just yeah. super. You know what it gave me an appreciation for? Was uh, women who have been released that have kids. Yeah. Because I was like, I couldn't imagine having to do all this shit yeah. and having to drag a kid along with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you have just one. Yeah. If you just have one. Yeah. Like, I mean, how many women that are just being released from prison have, I mean, you still have to like, like if you're going to get assistance, assistance doesn't happen same day. No. You know, no. daycare is crazy Stupid. expensive. Yeah. Yes. Like, in some places, like some people are paying like twelve hundred dollars a month. Yeah, more than that. For yeah. one kid. For one, one kid. kid. I know. What I used to pay for three kids, somebody pays for one now. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. So I just couldn't. I was like, as I was going through that, like I, well, I went to jail, <laughs> and then I was like watching, and I was just like, I just can't imagine having to drag kids along everywhere that you go. Like, go meet with your PO, go to court, go to take your drug test for employment go get your identification, go like all that stuff. There's just no, there's no way. I bet you if statistically, if you ran the numbers, I bet you women have, uh, you know, plus if they do get a job, they get paid less than men do. Mm -hmm. They don't get that access to jobs that, that, you know, like for a guy, you can show up on a construction site and they just assume, just assume he knows what he's doing, yeah. you know? Right. And so that's probably why when you're, when you see construction companies, you know, it's rare that you see, you know, at least in North Dakota, women on, on the crew unless they're the, holding the flags. Right. That's the only time I've, I've really ever saw them. Every once in a while I see an operator or, yeah. you know. So they can't just, <clears throat> they don't get the, a lot of the privileges that guys get when it comes to reentry. Partly, I think that's why the homeless shelters are so filled with guys. Because they can just show up mm -hmm. and it's first come, first serve. And so who's going to be faster, a guy who has, you know, no kids he's dragging along or a girl that's, like, staying in a hotel that's got to pack everyone up? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then by the time she gets there, it's all filled up because all seven guys got there before her. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and they don't take kids. kids. are working with you and everybody's yeah. going, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to punch like, you in the face and get <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, for real. Well, and, and that was just a metaphor. <laughs> 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 he didn't mean that. <laughs> He was talking to me. Yeah. That's fine. I'm a grown up. Yeah. It's okay. That's yeah. also just a metaphor. metaphor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's wrong too, isn't it? Yeah. Well, my, kid, <laughs> my, my kid did that to me one time. I was putting my, my youngest one in, uh, my youngest boy in uh, his car seat, and he was just like, you know, doing this thing, and I was like, I will punch you in the face. And I was joking. He knows I'm joking. We say it to each other. And my son, my oldest son, is recording me. Of course he is. Yeah. And he was like, oh. <laughs> And I was like, no, you didn't. He's like, I have blackmail for life. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Anyway. Uh, I've taken kids my kids amazing. to daycare naked a few times because they won't get dressed. So I'm like, fine, get in the car. <laughs> and then we got there. You know, Jack was probably five. And we get to daycare. And he goes, oh, what do I do now? They're going to see my penis. And I'm like, well, then put your damn clothes on. God damn it. You are your father's kid for oh, sure. Oh, man. <laughs> Called his bluff. Uh, I just, uh, yeah. Okay. yeah but that's what you got to do. It would have been a different, like, I would have been like, mm -hmm. props to the kid if he would have been like, let's go. Yeah. yeah. Rock it. Yep. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, son. <laughs> I call your bluff back. No. Yeah, what if he would have? What would you have done? I would have walked him into daycare. It's just daycare. Yeah. You'd no. probably go to you jail. Got, like, halfway it was there a and home like, daycare. It was a home daycare. We're doing daycare in the band today. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to drive around town. I don't know. It worked out good for me, so I'm just going to go with that. But, yeah. uh, two of my kids These kids that ever smarten up, look out. Yeah. <laughs> We're in trouble. I know. Fine. Don't put your clothes on. Let's go. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Anyway, but yeah, the connections you make when you get out are huge and if they <laughs> in both directions you know you can either flip 20 bucks into 200 real quick with that buddy or you can connect with somebody that's 
in recovery or at least going the right way or just you kind of need a leg up somebody has to help or yeah. you're just kind of stuck because <clears throat> to do all those barriers. things are a lot and I think out of that process comes you know I talk about a lot where for Adam and I you know just getting his perspective on the way things are and what mm -hmm. the way I think you know we've actually been able to open things up for thinking different yeah you know because yeah. I think I think it could be huge for the people that are in those positions like mm -hmm. the Department of Corrections the BOs that kind of thing um, that it uh, gives them some empathy yeah you know for real because one of the things I always would say say to a lot of the POs is like when we were talking to them is how many of you would ride your bike at 20 below yeah. to work yeah unless you're some physical freak that you ride yeah. bikes because you like it yeah weird. which is sick <laughs> in itself but yeah you know it's like for a fun run <laughs> i'm just gonna go ride my bike at 20 below it's this is fun i like our exercise. friends are chain smoking while yeah. they're riding the bike <laughs> I saw, a guy, go, I saw a guy yesterday, he was on his bike, had a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. I was like, I get you, man. Yeah. I've had that ride. I'm, I woke up late, I'm in a rush, I need to get my smokes in, drinking coffee while riding a bike to work. Yep. No, no hands. Yeah. <laughs> no biker shorts either. Future CEO right there. Yeah, for real. It's true though, the empathy is a huge piece. Yeah, I think it's a big yeah. part of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's some of the, some of the best friendships I have now in recovery want I mean they're empathetic but I think they're empathetic because they've actually went through it and not got told or not like they actually experienced it like I think when it, especially when we go into the rooms it's like well everybody here has the same issue as I do so they understand every single thing I'm talking about because when I would go to treatment or when I would go home to like talk to Jelsa or just different ones like they would be like oh okay cool you know we understand like how does it make you feel you know trying to yeah. trying to connect but at, at a certain point, it's like, well, this is only going to go so far because yeah. you don't have an addiction or you don't you haven't <laughs> committed the crime or you know it's only going to get us so far to be able to have that like connection to truly understand yeah. what I'm feeling, and so then now having my friends now and even my sponsor and just different ones, it's like, well, now the connection's even deeper because like you true, you truly understand what I'm saying when I'm feeling this way when I when I'm just spinning or when I'm manic or when I'm just all these different things. It's like, oh, then they can say, hey, well, just last week or, you know, not like, oh, I understand, you know, how can I help? It's like, well, I don't, I don't always need you to help. Or sometimes I don't want your help because if you don't yeah. quite get me, that's like, well, you're, you're gonna screw it up. And it's just, I'd rather just. It's kind of the same thing, even you know. with the kid, you know, like with my daughters, I'll be like, is this a fix it situation or a listen? <laughs> I like that. You know, because I think it's, I like it's that. part of, you you're know, because so I want to fix it. You know, no. as a man, we want to fix shit. Yeah. You know, so it's like when we can look at it, you yeah. know, because then it's most of the time it's just listen. Right. You know, they don't want me to fix yeah. it. Yeah, I'm like that with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, if someone starts venting to me, I'm like, ah, we, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll come back, and then Scott would be like, why do you always shit on me? <laughs> what <did it> happened? <laughs> Or Camille or whoever will just be like why like because one of the team will come up and be like this this and this and be like oh, that's horrible and then I go fix it and Scott's like why did you break everything that I just fixed <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know what I'm just gonna move to the housing <laughs> like, you, you are safe over I am because people can't just come up and vent anymore <laughs> why did you give it out no one's gonna make the trek. There's, there's nothing that bad happening where they're like, I gotta drive all the way over there and see Adam right now. All the way over there. All the way. It's like, yeah, because like everything is all. It's like six. Well, depending on which way you go. I just had a bike and a pack of arms. Yeah. But I used to get messages all the time, whether it was guys in the houses to. Like, you know, team members or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. <laughs> and then I, I would be like, I just thought I was helping. <laughs> <laughs> Stop at it. He's like, what? I was just helping. I was like, no, you're not. And then there's the other end of it where it's like, you know, somebody goes to Darby and be like, did you see what Adam said? <laughs> it's like, God damn it. <laughs> Logging on to Facebook. <laughs> like, how do I, how do I fix this? <laughs> 
but I think that's Dar part of it. Darby, you're kind of like, have you ever watched the Howard Stern show? You're like Robin. Yeah. You're like the person over on the facade. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I know yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. With the real ideas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like the smart. <laughs> I know. Has the you know the 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 yeah. clarity? Yep. Howard Stern's just like, like, where's the camera? You know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So but how many people like in those houses? Because I've always said, even in my career, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not getting better. Like you have to go to meetings, you have to make yourself uncomfortable, you have to connect with people. And if that's not happening, you're just not getting better. My socks yeah. match my pants. Yeah. We're done. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Adam has evolved. Adam accidentally did something. Adam was helping again. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. You match your socks, you get sober. Yeah. Years. yeah. How'd I, you get 11 years? So, I still on 11 years. Oh yeah, yeah. That's Thanks. Awesome. Appreciate it. Proud of you. The hard part. Yeah. Three, oh, three months more than me. Yeah. I. It's been uh, hard ever since uh, you. One, one year day one. <laughs> I was yeah. like, where are we going? Oh, like, <laughs> it's even gotten harder. Apparently. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> no, I turned a year so, like my first year, everything seemed like it was really easy because it was like, it, it sucks so bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. like, so when I actually got sober, I was like, the only real hard stuff about it was emotionally, like yeah. right away or whatever. Like once I got past or got used to it, it was uh, it was pretty easy that first year. Because it was like, man, anything's better than that. Uh, but even those connections you made in your first first year? Oh, yeah. Or first four first years, or whatever? <laughs> like, 13. did they, they absolutely, seriously though, they kept you coming back to have mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. That's, you know? That's and I think that's a big Without part that. of, you know, even for me, like, being out there for, being sober for four and a half years, and then going back out mm -hmm. and just burning everything to the ground. When I came back, I still had some people. It's always cool because I had two or three of them that were like super. Everybody was like, oh, I'm so glad you're back. Yeah. Oh, just, you know, Derek, first time I come back, he goes, thanks for fucking up our trip to Colorado. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, unconditional love here. Huh? It is, but, it's about but it was, yeah, it was about him. <laughs> but I think that's the part of it is, you know, when we do make mistakes, you know, and we do, yeah. people, you know, relapse mm -hmm. is a huge part of recovery, yeah. you know, and people yeah. are like, oh, you're, old, you're giving the green light to relapse. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying it's a reality. Yeah. And then it's how we treat people when they come back. You know, mm -hmm. if, we, if we're, everybody's sitting on, on a pedestal saying, what were you thinking? You know, yeah. they're kind of treating you like you screwed up. Mm -hmm. You're like, why am I back here? Yeah. You know, but right. for me, it was the hardest thing when I came back was like, because I went, my meeting is a Saturday morning, mm -hmm. and going back in those doors, that was the hardest thing, because yeah. I was so ashamed mm -hmm. and remorse and just feeling oh, guilty, yeah. and, and you're, that's your disease working on you saying, you don't need these people. Yeah. You know what, who, who it's mm -hmm. worse for? People who stayed sober longer, and they then went back out longer. and came back. Oh yeah. I have yet to see anyone who's been sober longer than 15 years who actually went back out that came back Stay. I still haven't seen I've one. I've seen some. Uh, Just Dave. say you haven't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you always got to one-up me every time we're on camera? I was like, oh, I've seen three. <laughs> no, I was just thinking of, of Dan. He was 25 years sober. And now he passed away, but he was, mm. I think it was 20 See? years. <laughs> See? <laughs> he was 20 years sober. He died. But yeah, it's yeah. very, very small. Very rare. And it's almost like, like, you know, because there's the, the couple different trends that I see or whatever is like the guy who relapses all the time mm -hmm. and then gets sober. Yeah. And then, you know, the person who gets sober right away, right? Those are kind of the two, yeah. right? Or someone who comes and then like leaves, never comes back or whatever. But um, it's almost better to get it all out of the way, yeah. right? Yeah. Right away and then get sober than right. it is to like or get sober right it. away and then get... Right then relapse, yeah. yeah, you know, after multiple years of recovery. Cause it's almost like, I don't know. It's like kick dogs. Yeah. Like it was, it was tough after four and a half years to, yeah. to, after it was out there to come back in. Yeah. But one of the cool things for me was I that was, it humbled the shit out of you. Oh yeah. But one of the best moments was I was at Casey's or oh. stop and go at the time. Yeah. And then, 
my boss at the time was driving me around because for my sales post <laughs> because I didn't have a license. And Tony pulled up on his motorcycle. Yeah. And I got down in the far as I could in that oh. seat so he wouldn't see me, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, then I hear the motorcycle start up and I go, yes, he didn't see me. Next thing I know, <laughs> he's knocking on my window. He, I roll it down and he goes, hey. He goes, just because you're drinking doesn't mean we can't be friends. Yeah. And that was a big thing, you know, yeah. for just to hear that from somebody that's still in the program. Yeah. And I think sometimes we end up, when we're in recovery, when somebody does go back out, it's almost like, uh oh, I can't hang out with that person. You know, yeah. there gets to be some separation yeah. that we're almost like. And you don't want to make it weirder for right. them. And you know what I mean? Well, and that's what I said. But it's also I want to protect my sobriety. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so I think it's it's a it's really conflicting because you're trying to figure out. I still want to. Mm. You're not this... really that way anymore, though. Huh? You're not really that way anymore. Like no. you'll totally hang out with a guy who's relaxed. I know. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean. But early but on, yeah, early you're on just it like. Was like it was like they were contaminated or something. It's like, oh no, they got drunk. I'm, I might get yeah. drunk. Oh my God, it's explosives. <laughs> but I think it's just hanging out with. Oh man, I have relapsed. <laughs> it was like right just now. Just talking to you, I relapsed. But it's true. That I, there's a lot of guys that go back out if one of their buddies go. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like the anti-network. Yeah. yeah. You know, I know. like. And it's like that. Yeah. But I think a it's, point to say how shitty recovery is, and you're like, okay, why? And they sit in the bar and they're drinking. Like, like that meeting was a joke. Well, I don't know why we win. Just enjoy your drink. You need to get sober. <laughs> I know. And I left after I don't know 15 years, but I didn't drink. But coming back was super humbling. And I, because mm. because my job became my meeting all of a sudden, and I quit talking to my sponsor and I quit doing all the things. But I came back to the meeting and this girl introduced me, introduced herself to me, and I'm like, bitch, I made this meeting. You know I mean? like, I've been around for so three months. months. <laughs> you must be new so here. Oh, God, really we got a newbie, fresh meeting. I had a guy in the house one time. I, went, I just went to the house and I, I walked in. I was, I was checking on it. I was like looking around to make sure it was clean and stuff. And this guy walks up to me, he's like, hey. I was like, hey. He's like, my name's whatever. And I was like, Nice to meet you. And he's like, well, here's the rules. And I was like, okay, I'm going to run with this. And he gave me a tour of the house and stuff. Oh, and sweet. he was like, so uh, when did you get out? And I was like, oh, it's been a while. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody else came in, and they're like, oh, what's up, Adam? And he was, and he was like, oh, you guys already know each other? He's like, yeah, he founded F5. He's like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, and you say something. I was like, I, it's weird. Yeah, I know. You know? Yeah. Like, I was enjoying it. You were invested, and yeah. I just wanted to, I didn't want to ruin your see day. how helpful you were. You were proud of it. Well, I, was, I did. I was like, you did a super yeah, good job. So do you think sometimes <laughs> that that resistance to that sometimes is, you know, I was t explaining to another buddy that we had a buddy that went back out, and he was really upset about it. I said, sometimes I think it's, I'm almost jealous of that person that they're they're not burning it to the ground. You know, that there's almost yeah. that fear, you know, like, mm -hmm. holy shit, he's made, you know, I couldn't do that. I tried right. that and yeah. I burnt it to the ground, yeah. but he's actually succeeding right. in life. You know, he's got huh. kids and he's got his job, he owns a business and he's doing all these things. And, you know, it's almost like, wait a minute, you're, yeah, he's yeah, drinking yeah, yeah. again. So you're almost like, wait a minute, this is supposed to explode at some point. But how much <laughs> and it effort doesn't. goes into keeping that afloat? Well, Keeping it probably the, does, but... You know what I mean? I definitely don't want people in recovery to think that I am burning it down. I want them for sure to oh, think yeah, that yeah. I got my shit mm. together. Yeah, yeah, there's that too, you know. It's like, <clears throat> so it, I think it just gets, it's just kind of different. Yeah, I, you just don't know the end game. Like, right. it, you, know, you never know what, what it eventually might happen. Because yeah. there's a lot of guys I've seen leave, and they look normal. And they're like brewing their own beer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're like, you know, drinking craft beer or whatever and look like they got their shit together. And I'm just like, man, that looks nice. It you know, look but nice. I don't even want anything other than the beer. <laughs> no, it's like, I know, I know. you know, and, so, and then, you know, tw 15 years later, mm -hmm. I don't want the shit fell off for them. All the yeah. Stuff, yeah. yeah. They're getting divorced. They got like, I mean, Granted, there's guys in recovery that are going through the same shit, yeah. you know. So I think really it's just like how mentally, mm -hmm. like, stable do you want to be? Because if I'm, I think if I went through the things that I went through in the last 11 years, if I would have went through all those things drinking, I'd be in prison, yeah. 100%. Yeah, or dead. Sure. Huh? Or, or dead. dead, hopefully. Yeah. Because then I wouldn't have to deal with it, yeah. you know. But there's no way. It doesn't promise you a <clears throat> No. It just... 
yeah. you get to live your life. The right. highs and lows, you get to be there for all of it, which yeah. is super cool, really. Because yeah. <clears throat> the good days, the bad days, anyway, it's all all right. So Scott, when you came back, or like that first meeting, did you talk to anyone beforehand, or did you just show up? I just showed up. Oof. I remember I used to drive by Saturday mornings hungover, yeah. just saying, God, I wish I could go back in there, and I was like, yeah. you don't need to go there. So I'd go to the bar at 8.30 in the morning, you know, huh. on a Saturday, just because I felt so crappy, mm -hmm. you know? But like I said, it was, it was just, it was so cool when I walked in that room, you know, there was a dozen guys came up and gave me a hug and said, man, we're glad you're back, man. Uh, Except one guy who's one of my really good friends, <laughs> Bruce, comes up to me and goes, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> and I'm like, he's the only guy that can say that to me. And I know where it's Everybody coming. else is just yeah. like, oh, Scott, oh, yay. Yeah. Prodigal son. You know, he tell that story. He goes, I don't think I swore. I said, Bruce, do you know yourself? Mm. I always swear. It's like, okay, that's right. There's always that one guy. Yep. You got your, you got your sponsor. <laughs> You got your fun guy, like the one who co-signs all your bullshit. And yeah. then you got that one guy you don't really hang out with, but he'll call you on everything. <laughs> he's just like, why? Are you? And you're like, okay with it, because he's kind of a piece of sh shit, too. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> not that Bruce is. Questioning but, me. Yeah. You know because you know. But you, yeah, because yeah. you know you. Yeah, know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's that. Uh, but I think that's one of the things that keeps a lot of people from the rooms, mm -hmm. you know, is coming back anyway, whether it's NAA, whatever it is. You know, whatever your recovery route is, that it's that fear of how people are going to react, mm -hmm. what they're going to think of me. You know, and that gets to be that's heavy, man. That gets yep. really heavy on your on your soul as far as trying to figure out who you are. And it's like I'm just a piece of shit. And then you get back, and it's like, no, I'm really not. You know. Yeah. So I was saying about the the airport story. He was he called me, and he was like in his first year of sobriety, and, and he was just like. Everybody's drinking, and he was there with his kid, and, you know, and, and those trips he always drank when he was on them, you know, and he was like, he's like, oh my God, everybody's drinking, I just, I don't know what to do, and I said, well, look around the room and see who's not drinking, and he said that really was a turning point for him, because yeah. he looked around, and he said, most of the people weren't drinking, right? you know, they were drinking water, Diet Coke, or yep. something, you know, so, so I think sometimes it's, we get in our own head so much that everybody's watching us, you know, it's like, yeah. Watching people when they first get sober too, or going to a social event, they got to have something in their hand. Yeah, I can't. Like, oh my God, I, I got to look, look like I'm like drinking. The sober person. <laughs> oh my God, he's sober. And I'm like, nobody cares. Nobody really cares. They never, they never they did until you got obnoxious yeah. and started taking clothes off, and yeah. then they're like, we should call the police. Yep. <laughs> oh God, he's drunk again. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah. Give well, it ten minutes. <laughs> what the what, Let's learn to let's a see where bit. this goes. <laughs> always like, well, this is going to be a good story. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true, though. I really think that the people, any people that I've sent to recovery meetings or whatever, the ones that don't make the connections, like don't stay to chit chat and have these, you know, friendships, they don't stick around. They yeah. just don't. It's so much bigger than just being at a meeting or being with in treatment. Like treatment in my a humble opinion is an expensive way to get to recovery meetings and make those friendships and start creating that. Whether you stick with it for the rest of your life or not, it doesn't matter. Just to get to know some other people that are sober, because yeah. you don't you don't know where to meet sober people at this point, you know. So yeah. anyway, my but buddy you Keith always says, you know, treatment gets you sober. Yeah. AA keeps you sober. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of the concept. Is like you get some education on it. You get some, yeah. you know. It's important part of it. It's that part of getting understanding mm -hmm. where things are coming from. But it's like you said, it's all the connections that you yeah. make after. It's the fellowship. It's you know going to coffee afterwards, or you know yeah. some of those things. And even as you are in sobriety for a while, you know you start. For me, the first year, two years, I was like, I'd call Cheney and Tony at. 10.30 at night, hey, you guys want to go get coffee? And they're like, it's 10.30 at night, Scott. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, let's go. And they're like, no, go to bed. <laughs> but I just Sweet. wanted people in my life, because yeah. you know, I was so afraid that I was going to be get isolated again or yeah. be where I was at down there and, and just finding a way to stay connected to people. And it was, but then as, as I got through it, you know, and then you get busy with life and yeah. your jobs and stuff and traveling a lot, you know, it's like, oh, they would, hey, why don't you come out for 
for fellowship yeah. afterwards, like, ah, oh, no, I got to get home, you know, and it's yeah. like, I just, you can feel yourself pushing that away, yeah. and I, but, you know, try to get reconnected to that. I've really gotten back into that and being a part of that, because I think yeah. it's really important. I think it's huge, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think there's, like, you get sober, and then there's a point in your recovery where you have, like, this emotional bottom, kind of, not that there is really a bottom, but it's like, you got to start to work on your emotional recovery, and you have to, like, like you said, reinvest yourself and make an effort again to be active and to go out and do things. Because life gets busy and then I get important and I don't need, I know what my sponsor's gonna say, I don't need to call and check in and blah, blah, blah. All those little things that keep me accountable and kept my life good suddenly fall to the wayside and I can't figure out why I'm depressed or unhappy. And it's just like, just like drugs or whatever was in front of me, I would just, get as much as I could. I did the same thing with self-pity, depression, anger. I just mm -hmm. like resentment. I just, I just like drink it, you know what I mean? And wallow in it and uh, deflate my own balloons and have a pity party and you know what I mean? Yep. I'd invited you, but you wouldn't have come anyway and whatever, you know, all that stuff. But it's, it's like I got to find a healthy way to deal with all that stuff. And that's well into recovery. That's, you know, 15, 20 years sober, so. So yeah, there's a lot of hope. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going out, people. Oh, it's possible. <laughs> but you never know what's gonna come of it, really. Everything's fine. Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Just fine. Just fine. That's how you get there, everything's fine. But mm -hmm. like since the passing of our friend who was really close, um, I've hung out again with these three other girlfriends of mine that we used to hang out every weekend all the time. Mm -hmm. And now, since his passing, we've hung out every weekend. And it has, like, sparked this, like, joy that is, it's just, like, oh, really? cannot, yeah. it's unmeasured. Yeah, because the phone calls I get <laughs> are not joyful. They and call, they every time call. they hang out, I get a phone call. <laughs> He'd be like, hey, Adam, you remember this? And I'm like, no. It's story time with yeah. the ladies. I don't get any of those calls. Oh, oh, well, you're on the list now. OK. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, too, isn't it's it? It's like the, yeah, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Friends. Why didn't you ever hit on us? That's usually his. <laughs> why didn't you hit on us? They called me like, why did you ever hit on us? And I was like, because you're too old. I know. I'm like, oh, wow. Let's call him next week. <laughs> Hang up. <laughs> Now we're old uh, women that don't know how the phone works. We're they just were gonna like keep the, going to keep Like when I went to the meeting or whatever, they were like the four women that were like sponsoring <laughs> women. And then I, you know, go on a date with, and I'm, they, any, anytime any of those four were sponsoring, it was like I was not getting anywhere. Like, I was like, they were like properly armed, you know, uh, with facts about themselves. And you know, like Adam is, stay away from him. Self-confidence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, well, okay. Well, I guess I'll go to a different meeting. <laughs> what do you look for at a date? Uh, low self-esteem. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> anyway, but yeah. So it's so it's, it's not like I had high self-esteem. I was. <laughs> it's about recovery. Yeah. So. So do you think on that 366 day you're ready to date? On the, I think that you do whatever you do, just keep going to meetings, yeah. I can't, I cannot offer advice like, wait a year. I mean, I, I can say that, I never did that. But. I Every time I did, ever did, it just, it went sideways anyway. Yeah, I know. So it's like, why don't you wait till you get through the steps and then start it? Well, that didn't work. Yeah. Let's wait till you get through your four steps and you take a real inventory and know all your character defects and stuff. Nope, didn't work. Yeah. They just knew better about them. <laughs> And it might be that we when just need to change. Is that it? Just, you yeah. think? No. Yeah. No? No. Wait till it's You really think painful. that might be it? What? We just need to change <laughs> our sure. behavior? Yeah. yeah. If it's really painful, yeah. then the, the funny thing is, is when we think we've changed, we actually probably haven't. <laughs> We're just good at covering up the bullshit a little bit. It's kind of like, you know, women starting to put makeup on again. It's like... I look better. <laughs> they do. They, they do. do look better. Thank you know, you. but it's like, you know, it's like a beard for me or whatever. Like under this, not so good. <laughs> I grow the beard out. It's like, oh, Adam's changed. <laughs> 
It even looks good. <laughs> you look fantastic. You look healthy. You look sober. What's different? Uh, Not much. Uh, my I actions. Ask, actually. I'm living healthy. Yeah. I've changed Working my diet. <laughs> I run a mile every day. With a cigarette in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's never been. But in my first year, I was, pr like, I was not, like, chubby yet. Like, I was, like, fit yeah. because I didn't have a car. <laughs> so I had to, like, walk everywhere and ride bike and stuff. And then as soon as I got my car, <laughs> that was the last time I exercised. <laughs> this you is guys. recovery. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all very attractive. You're too hard on yourselves. It really like it's how you carry yourself that women like. It's not, it's not your yeah, thickness or thinness or whatever beard or whatever. Thick. Size matters. I'll tell you that. But it's not, it's not your gut that they're worried about. <laughs> I'm swell. Well, it's the first thing I think. Like if I, if, if like for some reason, like me and another woman like catch each other, I'm like, I'm <laughs> sucking in my gut. Perfect example this morning. Yeah. I couldn't talk for like two out. minutes because I thought, what? I thought we were You're getting, getting a, thought we were getting a guest. We're starting to get a guest, and I'm yeah. like, yeah. Oh, sit that's up a little. Yep, yeah, sitting up a little tall. Well, that's not for me. Oh yes. <laughs> Oh, I do have the breather. I'm gonna pass oh, out. Okay, okay, okay. Just, uh, After every an time Kirsten looks away, we're like, "Oh shit!" That's all so the cookie <laughs> crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> so big friends in recovery, yeah. yeah. Uh, keep whatever them, they are, keep yeah. them close. <laughs> yeah. This is what it's like having friends in recovery. This is though. this is literally. Yeah. Yeah. It is like yeah, 100. Yeah. percent You talk about dumb shit, and nobody's like. What was you? What are you talking about? You know, when I started at five, that was the goal: was to create engagement like this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it was like everybody that I knew that was getting out of prison or well, it doesn't matter, treatment center, detox. It was like every engagement they had was all about checking the box, mm -hmm. yeah. and it was like, man, when's the last time someone sat down with them and just had coffee? Yeah. No agenda, no motive. Mm -hmm. And we still fall into that or whatever because we still have our jobs, right. you know, that we have to ensure we do. But it's, I think, you know, and that it's also probably this is kind of the, the part in the peer support world where they really struggle with because it's like they're friends, right. you know. Yeah. And so then when, you know, something goes sideways or whatever, like, <laughs> it's like, why would you do that? He's my friend. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yes. Yeah. And then the people are like, there's no boundaries in this industry. And there's... <laughs> Is, they're not very professional. It's like, well, I mean, how professional are you with your friends? Yeah, it's right. got to be like, great. It's a great area. And you know, it's working, so. Mm -hmm. Like, if it, oh, the only people who could get treatment were other doctors. Right. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Like, I would imagine that it would probably be a little fishy up there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little weird. <laughs> but you're, you're, you're you know, you're being doctors to people that you have no connection to. You can't really right. have empathy. Yeah. You know, like, you can stay objective. You can stay professional. But I, I guarantee you, if it was like a floor full of doctors and you're the doctor mm -hmm. and they're your friends, it would be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? So what has been like the outcome of those houses, the people that come out, are they still connected to each other or do they experience that connection that helps with their recovery? Or they just kind of like get their time? No, I, FI was never really meant to be like a full on lifelong community as much as it was meant to be a primer for other communities. Yeah. You know, go back to your other. community, enhance it. Yeah, yeah. I think Ed Munum, he, he said, he was like, maybe it was Ed. It was one of those guys. But he was like, send us your, you know, from AA, he's like, send us your drunks and we'll send you back better Christians. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so it was like kind of the same concept where mm -hmm. it was like, you know, <laughs> Like, nobody, I mean, not a lot of people are going around telling everyone that they're in, a, in an AA community. No. Like, they're a part, like, people are still kind of a part of F5. They come back, they volunteer, you know. But I don't know, I don't know if, like, lifelong, you know, friendships are happening unless they, they center it around F5 right. or something like that. Or if they found each other in another community. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, maybe one day if we had, like, the structure for it, it could be a lifelong kind of community, uh, but it's been more of a, st like a team member 
yeah. community more than it is participant. Mm -hmm. How helpful sense. do you think it's been that they connect with each other in those houses at the time when they're starting to build shit up? You know, I, I mean? think it's more important that they there's a level. It's not so much the connection between the two as much as it is like feeling confident to hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so like Laverne last night when, was talking uh, at this thing that we were at, and he he mentioned about. Um, how some guy come, came and told him, he was bitching about how no one ever does the dishes. Ah, you know? yeah. And he was like, and some guy, and then he looks over at me, came and told me, he's like, why don't you just do them? Yeah. Like, why are you willing to go back to jail because someone else isn't going to do the dishes? Yeah. And he just never thought of it that way, so he started doing the dishes. And then another guy saw him doing it, and then he started yeah. shoveling the, the sidewalk. He, but he would not do the dishes. Right. <laughs> he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just won't do dishes. But they found a happy medium. And he was like, and of all the people that were living in that house at that moment, the only people who aren't drunk or locked up are me and that other guy. Yeah. The rest of them all got locked up. They're all back in prison. Because hmm. they were willing to, see it. yeah, they were willing to do work that wasn't necessarily their doing. Right. They were willing to sacrifice their ego a little bit. And so if you can do that, and I think that's probably more important than an, like an actual connection in the house. Yeah. yeah, it's more of a work ethic kind of accountability mm -hmm. effort. Like we're this is important yeah. to us to stay sober. Since day one, the dishes. The dishes. I swear to God, it's always, always the dishes. Always, 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 always. the dishes. <laughs> I, sometimes I wonder. I'm like, I wonder what it'd be like if we put a dishwasher in there. And you know what would happen? It would just be a dishwasher full of dirty yeah. dishes. <laughs> Nobody would turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> it happens at home. Yeah. I don't I fall. Just it's like, don't. has anybody run the dishwasher? What? What? Yeah. I no? Know. I mean, I get it. Come if I on. came home after a long day yeah, and I was sure. living with five other dudes and I came back and the sink was full of dishes, I'd be like, what? Is go I'm not doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, they're Visual not my water. dishes. Yeah. You know, I've heard more people go back to prison know, saying those aren't my dishes oh my than God. I have anything else. Yeah. yeah. Which, when you say it out loud as you're walking, it's down insane. To prison, is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I, the one time I was in the jail, and the guy was like, "Man, I, you know, F5 kicked me out, and and that's why I'm here." He was trying to disrupt the meeting. Yeah, yeah. He was just like, "I'm here because Adam kicked me out of the house, or whatever." I was like, "No, you're here because you wouldn't do the goddamn dishes." Yeah. Whoa. No, I caught a charge and you kicked me out. And I was like, yeah, but before that, you weren't willing, you didn't want to, do, you made a big yeah. deal about not doing the dishes. You got so pissed off that you eventually, you know, no. used and then you broke the law and then you're like, that's where it starts. Yeah, for real. Yeah. You, you know. should rename the whole thing. Just do the fucking dishes. Yeah. Just do the dishes. Maybe you should write a book. Every once in a while, I'll go to the yeah, house meeting, and Derek will be like, hey, you should give the dishes talk. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that Never as, fail. as your second book, Do the Dishes. Do the Dishes. What's the first one? Ugly Grace. Oh, yeah, I like yeah. that. So I think, too, but it's, it comes back to the whole concept of recovery. I like that you think that I'm going to write a let alone a second book. Well, yeah. <laughs> like I'm actually going to complete this first one. You are. I have oh. total faith in you. Oh. Confidence. I feel like I've already read it. Yeah, I think I've lived it. <laughs> I've lived most of it. I mean, you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to write this book and then I'm going to leave Scott out of it. <laughs> see, see how awesome it is that I'm writing a second book. But that's the part of recovery is I don't need to take credit for that. Wow. Oh my God. God. Get out of here, Scott. Oh my. I want to be a whole uh, chapter actually. So I'm he not, does it. I'm he not does, that he, recovered. He's really good, he's really good at not, not taking sober. credit. I'll give him that. But I bet when he goes home, he's like, Carrie, tell me I'm a good boy. <laughs> Turn the fan on. I say bad boy. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I say bad boy. We're not bringing that back around. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Dark, Where I was Dark going. Dark going to be like, oh, oh, cut it out. Yeah. Yes. Everybody's going to come to the house and see what the fan yeah. looks like. Oh, no, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. What's that? That's pretty cool. She's going to like, Just what are you die. <laughs> But I think what I was going to say is oh. what you were talking about with the dishes, and that's what, in essence, what recovery is. You know, helping one alcoholic helping another yeah. or addict is taking that time, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing people have trouble understanding is, why are you helping me? Yeah. What are you going to get out of this? I'm getting it. Yeah. yeah you know, mm. but it, but we've never had that. You yeah. know, that concept of yeah. If I wanted something, usually when I, when you needed something, I wanted something back. Right. 
you know, and that concept of wrapping your head around the Even idea if it's just that, the accolade. Yeah, yeah, just to say, yeah, you, you're amazing. Yeah. You know, but in recovery, if you really are working in a recovery program, you are willing to help people without anything coming yeah. back to you. Yeah. Because it does come back threefold. Yeah. When you when you are helping people and you're answering a call at eleven o'clock at night or yeah. you know, going to meet somebody or, you know, just taking the time to to meet with people. Yeah. And yeah, spend that sure. time. So I think that's the part of it is, you know, it's it's that concept of, you know, doing the dishes. You know, that's yep. in essence that's what we're doing. We're doing the dishes because we don't have to, yeah. we we want to. Without yeah. needing the pat on the back, right. like, oh, you did, yep. you did, you the, did dishes the dishes really great. Or you helped somebody. Best, the best yeah. dishes ever. Mm. Yeah. And it's not even that you want to, you just do them because. Yeah. Right. Like, it's right. I think there's more times that I did it just because it was like the right thing to do than yeah. it was because I wanted to do Nobody wants to do the, I mean, sometimes, I guess. But right. it was well, like, well, oh, I got something to well, do. Well, probably wasn't the right word. It was, I think that you hit it there. It was the right thing to do. Yeah. And that's pretty much what recovery is, taking the next, doing the next right thing. Yeah. You know, you taking know that right work, action. Because you've done it before yep. and it's worked. And it's, it's just worked. like. But what if I do it and it doesn't work? I'm like, well, then do then it again. Then you did it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Just keep doing. I mean, you're, you're willing to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result with alcohol. You might as well do it with good actions. Right. Yeah. You know, right. It'll try that's that. That's insanity. Too. You're not going to violate probation with that anyway. <laughs> like, how dare you walk ladies across the street yeah. and make sure they don't get hit by cars? I've never heard of anyone relapsing after something like that. Right. It's usually like <laughs> judging them. This, this lady's going too slow. Get out of the way. <laughs> They're usually like how Scott is when he's driving. Oh. Like, Are you an aggressive driver? <laughs> yes. Well, if, well, you if people drove like I oh, did, right? Okay. Yeah, there wouldn't be any accidents. It's true, uh, you know. Okay. I know. Yeah. Have well, you I ridden know. with him? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it, that's a. That's one of my defects. I really do have a. <laughs> it's one of those things where I'm like, mm-hmm. this morning. <laughs> it's just no I'm going way. to get coffee. No way. This, little this white, morning. You know, Honda, those zooped up cars or zipped up, whatever the hell you call them. He's like, pulls right in front of me. Like, what in the hell? And I go after him and I'm driving behind him and I'm like, and then I get up beside him. I'm like, what are you doing, Scott? Yeah. He's probably late for some. Then I remember Jeff's story about, oh, maybe this guy's got a, his wife's dying of cancer and he needs to, it was some young kid, so his wife wasn't dying. But probably not. Just, he had to get to school, maybe. <laughs> But it's, I do, I get caught up in that. And I'm oh, like, I know, oh, I know. don't do that. Yeah. I One time I got mad. I was like, this guy, rah, 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 just honking at him. And then I looked down and see the handicap plate. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Why are you yeah. driving? Oh, wow. Somebody can barely see the road. And I was like. I feel really bad. And then I started blaming the government. I was like, how's yeah. that? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, it's, it's not you. Whatever it yeah. is, it's not you. And yeah. just to be, to be transparent, I really didn't do it because I w- was thinking I wanted to be better. <laughs> I realized I have F5 rocks on my plates, and I'm like, oh, oh shit. I should <laughs> somebody's tailgate getting... somebody. Yeah, I, I probably should. I don't have anything. I, I know I should. After I thought about it, I was like, That's what I was Why does Adam have F5 logos on his car? Because he drives like an idiot. <laughs> God forbid. His car's full of dicks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's why, yeah. Oh, God. Anyway. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Wait, where do we go from here? Yeah. Well, thank you for all your friendship and being on the show. Oh, ditto. We want to thank our, of course, our friends and sponsors at Five Project, Ridge Treatment and Reentry Center, of course, GoAwayBear.com, Heat Trash Warehouse, Church from Fargo. Tune in next week. We have more amazing content. We're going to have some very fun guests and just a lot of really, really great things. So thank you all so much. And most importantly, have a great day in recovery.